Hey there once again YouTube, it's been a little while now. Right now I am working on my monthly volcano update which I put out on my website under monthly volcano updates. Um, here, let's just real quick go to my website. Now, if you guys ever see any incorrect images on my website, like let's say that I said there's a swarm from August 31st or something and the pictures say August 27th or a different date, please let me know because I have had a problem with images switching on this website and switching to images, images that they shouldn't be so if you ever see anything that's incorrect or wrong please let me know immediately so I can go on here and fix it because my website is just too big to see every single post and every single image but I have done a good job at getting rid of some of these problems on my website so monthly volcano updates I have not done it yet should be on the next day or two also in the more drop down menu don't forget deformation updates I am adding a new page to these guys I am adding a new page for the Ridgecrest Coastal Volcanic Field area and I will update those deformation plots uh, in just a few days as well as long uh, I'm gonna upload it with the monthly volcano update when I do do that now in this video I'm gonna talk about Mount Shasta and the Ridgecrest Coastal Volcanic Field area if we go to the Coastal Volcanic Field and Ridgecrest area which saw a magnitude 6.4 and 7.1 in early July we see seismicity continues. So magnitude 5 struck here just a few weeks ago. Two weeks ago, actually, if I'm not wrong. Um, seismicity still continues, guys. The Garlock Fault is seeing some earthquakes in the area. Just a few small ones. Garlock Fault stretches all the way down here, all the way up here. Now, the thing I'm going to talk about after I talk about Mount Shasta is this whole area, for some weird reason, a big swath of land in the Mojave Desert is seeing uplift right now. And I thought it was only the Ridgecrest area as shown by GPS station CCCC, but it's not. There are other GPS instruments in this location and even a few up here that are showing uplift, which I thought was strange because these earthquakes that were taking place were strike slip earthquakes where most of the movement was horizontal. So, I mean, there could be a little bit of quick uplift when these earthquakes occur, but up uplift still should not be occurring this late in the game. I mean, it's been, what, almost two months since the earthquakes, almost two months, since the earthquakes in the Ridgecrest and Coastal Volcanic Field. So I thought that was very interesting. So I'm going to talk about all that good stuff in just a second. But why don't we go all the way to Northern California real quick. Let's see. Come on, buddy. Well, give me a second, why don't you? All right. Now, right here at Mount Shasta, we are six earthquakes reported. Just in the, on the, e, under the, excuse me, under the east, southeast base of Mount Shasta, right in this location right here, we are seeing a shallow earthquake swarm take place, and earthquake swarms actually are kind of rare at Mount Shasta. Usually you only see about one or two earthquakes per month, and that's it. So this is definitely notable for one day, 1.8 to 3.5 kilometers in depth. Then we had a 2.7, a little bit deeper, at 7.1 kilometers in depth, 1.7 to 2.1. A 1.9 at 3.2, a 2.2 at 2.2, and a 2.2 at 3.3. Now for the magnitude 2.7 at 7.1 kilometers in depth, which was the largest of this earthquake swarm so far, we see 17 people reported feeling this earthquake. 17, guys, that's a good amount for a 2.7 underneath Mount Shasta. Looks like probably some people who were hiking it or were just walking alongside of it. Uh, now, so this is very interesting, guys. This is very, very intriguing. Earthquake swarms usually do not take place in this location. Oh, I should probably go back to the event page. But it's not unprecedented. It is, an, it is not a crazy earthquake swarm. Still have not seen a seismologist take charge of this earthquake swarm and report these events. These are just from the computers. The depth and the magnitude and the location are just from the computers, so it might be changed just a little bit, but... You, computers get it close most of the time, somewhat. So we're going to take data from this seismic station right here, which was the closest seismic station to this earthquake swarm in Mount Shasta in Northern California. Let's take a look at it now in the seismic program swarm. Okay, so I just looked at the data at the end. You guys are going to be shocked because I have never seen any type of activity like this at Mount Shasta before. You can't see it here. I'm not quite there yet. Let's start with the beginning of the earthquake swarm, which started late in the UTC day of September 1st. Right here we did see, I believe that was the magnitude 2.7, I believe. Uh, let's see here. Let's go, okay, let's go all the way back. 2.7 was 
Oh, no, never mind. That is not the 2.7. That's another smaller earthquake. Probably a 1.8, I'm going to say. And then after that, we did see one aftershock and a few other quakes during this day. Here, let me add a 1 hertz high pass filter to the 8th power. There we go. Okay, that got rid of the background microseisms. Now let's look for additional earthquakes. Because all I want to look at are the earthquakes right now. And there were a few that were not reported as part of this earthquake swarm. But most of them got reported. Most of them, I'm going to say, got reported. Down here, we see another earthquake likely in the same location at Mount Shasta. Not too crazy. You know, this is a lot of earthquakes for Mount Shasta since they usually never sees more than one or two. Uh, don't know what this is. That's very emergent. That's very interesting. I'll take a closer look at that later, but eh, let's see the dominant frequencies. Dominant frequencies go up to about 5.8 hertz, so it's not technically a low frequency event, but it can almost be, yeah, it's very close to a low frequency event, actually. So I don't know what that could be. I doubt that that's a glacier earthquake or an avalanche. I highly doubt that. So we did see a low frequency event right there. I don't know. But that's not what I want to focus on right now. We do see more earthquakes as part of this earthquake swarm. But down here, just in the past few hours at Mount Chester, this is not surface noise, my friends. Right now it's 6.43 p.m. Pacific Time, September 2nd, 2019. First right here, I believe is the, yes it is, this is the magnitude 2.7, which struck in that area at Mount Shasta. Notice 2.7, the second, at 1734. And we see at 1734 about, on the second, we see this is the magnitude 2.7 right here. Now let's go forward on the spectrogram. You can see multiple teeny tiny aftershocks right afterwards. Then we had a burst in three. It looks like three aftershocks, very teeny tiny aftershocks, but aftershocks nonetheless. And multiple earthquakes after that, kind of like a rapid fire swarm, like what we see at Yellowstone from time to time. Notice that? So a good amount of earthquakes are taking place and only a small fraction of them are being reported right now because I believe the seismologists have not looked at this earthquake swarm yet. They have not looked at it yet, so more could be reported for this location in the coming days, and I will make an analysis page for this earthquake swarm uh, later on. It will be up in a few days probably when I get a chance to do it. All right, now let's go down here to the main swarm that happened about, I'm going to say, a few hours ago. Look at this. This is just like what we see at Yellowstone when it's related to fluid migration. A rapid fire swarm it, with these characteristics, especially multiple events happening within just a second or two of each other, usually indicate some type of fluid migration. Whether it be magmatic or hydrothermal, that's up to you to decide. I can't decide that myself, but it is interesting nonetheless. And you can tell these are, this is not a tremor event. These are multiple earthquakes occurring in such rapid succession you can barely tell them apart. However, you can see there's a P wave right there. Uh, the first increase of energy of the second event right there. Third increase right about there. And a fourth increase right about there. So you can tell those were definitely about four events. Going forward, more earthquakes. Look at this, guys. Look at this. I have never seen this in my life of monitoring volcanoes for this for Mount Shasta. For other volcanoes, of course, this does happen every now and then, especially Yellowstone and Long Valley, too. But I've never seen this at Mount Shasta before. I mean, this is pretty crazy. That is a lot of seismicity within a short time period at a shallow depth for Mount Shasta, which is supposedly supposed to be very, very quiet for the next few hundred years or so. Supposedly. I mean, volcanoes don't erupt on a schedule. They can erupt early. They can erupt late. So really, anything could happen. Not saying it's going to erupt, guys. Just saying that there has been a good-sized increase in seismicity at Mount Shasta under the east-southeast base, most likely related to the system under Mount Shasta. So we will have to take a very, we have to keep a very close eye on this area. If it gets any worse or another rapid-fire swarm in Mount Shasta occurs, I will let you guys know. I would like to move on to the main course of this video. I was not expecting this to be the main course of the video, but. Let's move on to Ridgecrest Coastal Volcanic Field and take a look at the GPS deformation in that area for uplift and subsidence. Okay, so here we have Coastal Volcanic Field in this area right here and the Ridgecrest area right down here of California, which saw magnitude 6.4 and 7.1 in early July of this year, about two months ago or so. Now on my new page on my website, the deformation updates page, I have not added it yet, so you won't see it quite yet. In the next couple of days, it will be up along with my new monthly volcano update, but it will be under this tab, deformation updates, so keep checking back here every now and then and see if it is up. It will be up soon. 
Um, and we will keep an eye on it for the next few months or even I'm going to update it every two months or so with new deformation plots for the coastal volcanic field ridge crest area. But in this video, let's look at station CC CC right here. Now you'll notice just from looking at the all time plots, which have many, many years of data, let's go to NA12. Notice how right when the uh, earthquakes occurred, there was uplift and ridge crest. And uplift in the area was not so much noticeable within the volcanic field itself, but far to the south and to the east and southeast, there was uplift. I am very shocked. Look at all the way over here near, somewhat near Valley Wells. Notice how when the ridge crest earthquakes occurred, let's turn on NA12, you can see there is a little bit of uplift associated here. Even though the earthquakes in general were strike slip earthquakes, so there should not have been that much vertical deformation. So really, there should not have been, I mean, there could be a little uplift here and there, very small amount. But from what I'm seeing, let's go all the way down to the southeast, all the way down here. Notice how, around the same time, all the way down here, look at that. We do see a little bit of uplift. Now I'm going to take a closer look at these uh, GPS stations in Microsoft Excel. And this is far to the southeast, guys. Let's look over here, too. Again, I will look at some of these stations in Microsoft Excel and create a scatter plot so you guys can actually see a little bit more of a zoomed in look but look you can see a little bit of uplift right there as well let's go even farther from the epicenter look you see ridge crest right there let's go even farther all the way down here i'm going to say what maybe 60 to 80 kilometers away look at this on p590 na12 look at that we see a little bit of uplift occurring there's of course the millimeters the farther away you get the amount of uplift does go down obviously I mean I think the most intense is right around the ridge crest area so it is very interesting very very intriguing we're gonna take a look at some of these let's first take a look at my scatter plot for CCCC which is in ridge crest California all right what you're seeing right here is the plot that uh, the plot that I created for CCCC for my deformation updates page on my website. I have not added this image yet, but I'm going to do that very, very soon to my website. But I just want to show you so I wouldn't have to re-download the data. This is for the past year from September 2nd, 2018, which is the first dot, through 2019, September 1st, which is the last dot right over here. Notice how we see pretty much no uplift or substance at all, but then boom, right when the ridge crest events happened, which was right about here, we did see uplift started to occur and was trending it, the uplift was trending most recent data the past two dots do suggest that uplift still could be occurring in the ridge crest area but it looks like it possibly could be slowing down i think it's possible but i don't want to put that out there 100 for sure but this is for the ridge crest area guys just saying and from here to here from vertical line to vertical line we see a total of let's see one two three one two 10 millimeters, that's 10 millimeters. So one centimeter would be one vertical square right here. So let's go back. The next station I wanna look at is all the way down here. So we saw uplift was occurring near Ridgecrest. Could be slowing down, but too early to tell. Let's go farther to the south, to Ramsburg. Actually, wait, let's find a good one, shall we? Let's find a real good one. Uh, let's see, I wanna find a really good one. Okay, let's go to the southeast. No, that's not shown too much. Let's see, anything shown on this one? Yeah, something is showing, but it's not that crazy. It's a very small amount. Let's go down here. That's a very small amount as well. I'm trying to see if there's any major uplift, just very small, small amounts in millimeters down there. But let's take a look in the east, actually. Why don't we take a look in the east? P594. And let's go up to the web service documentation thingy, Bob. All right, let's see, P594, let's do P594. Same date range, same UNR, NA12, try it out. We're gonna highlight the link and download the data. Open link in new tab, and that will automatically download the data for me. Okay, let's open it up in Microsoft Excel. Let's go to downloads. All right, here we go. Okay, so let's go all the way up, shall we? You can see this is P594, NA12, UNR. 
going all the way down. This is vertical delta U, vertical uplift subsidence patterns. Notice right when the earthquakes occurred, there was a trend of uplift, but it looks like it's starting to stall out here as well to the east. So it's very possible the uplift could be stopping in the Ridgecrest Coastal Volcano Field area, but I'm not too sure. It's a little too early to tell, but I thought it was very interesting. And you can even tell on some of these uh, all-time GPS plots. Like, let's go down to the southwest. Not seeing too much right there, but just primarily to the southeast and the south, especially in Randsburg with R-A-M-T station. Right here, you can tell that there was a jump in uplift. So why would that occur? I mean, I know that can occur at tectonic events all the time, but this was primarily a strike-slip sequence for coastal volcanic field in the Ridgecrest area. So I find it a little confusing. I don't know if anyone's got an answer out there. Please leave it in the comments section below because I don't know. I'm very, very confused. And even up here to the north, was it this one that I saw? No, it wasn't really that one. Let's see. I think it's up this one. Okay, it's this one too. Even far to the north, northeast of the coastal volcanic field Ridgecrest area, we still did see a little bit of uplift associated with the Ridgecrest events. So it's like the whole area was swelling, guys. But let's look to the west. Shall we look over here to the west? Notice over here to the west, on the opposite side of the fault that slipped during 7.1, we see the opposite. We see subsidence. Isn't that intriguing? How we were seeing an uplift trend for quite a while, very small uplift trend over the, over the decades, basically. And then we saw a big drop in subsidence. So we saw uplift over, you know, over time and then subsidence when the events happened. But let's go back to the other side right over here notice how on the other side of the fault and a 12 notice how we were seeing barely any subsidence but subsidence was obviously occurring throughout all that time but we saw uplift so on the eastern side of the fault we see that up or subsidence was barely occurring for probably decades and then uplift happened right when the events happened in july of this year but if you go to the western side Go on the opposite side of the fault, uh, uh, uplift was occurring over decades and decades and decades, probably. I mean, very small amounts of uplift, but uplift nonetheless, over decades. And then all of a sudden, when the events happen, subsidence happen. So on the west, you have prolonged uplift and then subsidence. But on the east, you have prolonged subsidence and then uplift. That's very strange. I don't know. I think that's very weird. I think, to me, that shows a pattern. That this area has been building pressure to do that for a long, 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 long time, I bet. And it just reached its pinnacle and it just slipped. But it is strange how there was some uplift detected down here as well. But very small amounts, guys. Very, very small amounts. Not, not that crazy, but uplift nonetheless. So if anyone has an answer for that, please let me know in the comments section below. I find that very strange. However, down here to the southeast on this ridge... This is weird. We see prolonged subsidence since 2007 about. And then we see subsidence. Subsidence, subsidence. So that's a little bit opposite of what we saw up near the fault system on west or east. So it's very strange, guys, what happened with this event. So let me know what you guys think. I'll keep a very, very close eye on the rapid fire swarms at Mount Shasta, which I find very intriguing. This count of six will likely get higher in the coming days. So keep an eye out for my analysis page on that and keep an eye out for my coming monthly volcano updates and my deformation updates as well. God bless guys. Hope you have a great day. See you later.